All right, and we back on the forecast. Now, we as a people have to understand that we are at war. We have to be careful about how we move, the things we do. There's already so many obstacles in our way for us to be tripping ourselves up. Them criminalizing us isn't anything new. Right after chattel slavery ended, one black code in Alabama said it was the duty of any civil officer to report the names of any black children whose parents couldn't afford to take care of them. Then they would arrest their parents for being poor and sentence them to hard labor. And then on top of that, they would fine them and keep them in jail until they paid off their debt. But since they were already sentenced to hard labor and put back into slavery, they could never pay off their debt. And then their children would be sold off to become an apprentice, which was the new name for slave. And their former slave owners would have the first opportunity to get them. Government organizations like the Freedmen's Bureau, created by the Republicans who so-called ended slavery, went around tricking and forcing these black people to sign these sharecropping contracts, essentially putting them back into slavery. Because no matter what they tell you, they were never about ending slavery. And now today in Alabama, a young woman, Jasmine Shepard, she ended up getting beat by Tuscaloosa police after a traffic stop. So let's go back and see what happened to this young woman, Jasmine Shepard. Now to a police confrontation caught on camera that's raising new questions this morning. A police officer is accused of using excessive force against a 22-year-old woman, and she's now speaking out. ABC Steve Osinsami is in Atlanta with more on this. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Cecilia. We don't see what happens before the officer pulls this young woman over. Police say he was responding to a hit and run, and the police chief this morning says he is disgusted and embarrassed by what happened. Driver's license, proof of insurance. Tuscaloosa police are putting sunshine on this routine traffic stop that turned violent. I'll tell you what, go on, step out. Police body camera video shows one of their officers making an arrest Friday. Sir, are you please. serious? Sir. Have you lost your freaking Sir. 22 year old Jasmine Shepard is begging the officer not to arrest her. And as she turns around, it's not clear how, but she ends up on the concrete with the officer on top of her. They know. What they did was completely uncalled for. Shepard says police used excessive force. My face is brown. I can't even breathe. And, he, and I'm telling him to get up. I can't breathe. So I'm grabbing. People passing by recorded this cell phone video showing a second officer joining in, one of them beating her with a baton. Here's what one of them says when the beating is over. 21104, start medical this way. No. Shut your mouth! you do anything other than what you're told to right now, I'm going to kick you in the teeth. Do you understand me? Police are investigating. I was disappointed in the officers. I was disgusted by what I saw, what I heard, and I was embarrassed by it. They've charged this woman with leaving the scene of an accident, resisting arrest and assault. But because of this video, authorities are now considering dropping the charges. So this young woman, Jasmine Shepard, was pulled over because she left the scene of an accident. And when Officer Cole Ward pulled her over, she pulled over. He asked for her ID, so she tried to give it to him. But before she could get it, he told her to get out the car. Then this cop, Cole Ward, started trying to handcuff her. So she turned around and started pleading for him not to do what he was doing. But the way he sees it is she immediately started to resist. So then this cop, Cole Ward, throws this woman onto the ground. And that's when another cop, Stephen Laggy, comes running out of nowhere and then jumps on top of this woman. And as she's saying, she can't breathe. They're laying on top of her with her face on the ground. Now, the cop said she was grabbing him and grabbing at his baton. But it's two grown men who are supposed to be trained cops sitting on top of a woman. So then you can see one of the cops start hitting this young woman in the face with the baton. Then the cops started to threaten her. One of them said, if you bite me, you're going to lose every last one of your teeth. And they started calling her a dumb bitch. And then even after they cuff her, they kept talking to her. And one of them even said, you're lucky I didn't put my gun to the back of your noggin and make you obey. These cops out here giving mafia threats to women. And he also started telling her how lucky she is because he didn't shoot her. And one of the cops said, if my sunglasses are damaged, you're going to be criminally charged for that too. Despite the black police chief saying he's disappointed and there's no room for that on his force. They ended up charging this woman for getting beat up, and they didn't charge the cops for anything. They ended up charging this woman, Jasmine Shepard, for getting beat up by the cops, but they didn't charge the cops at all. 
No, I stop you. It started as a traffic stop. A Tuscaloosa police yeah, officer fine. pulled over this yeah, woman, fine. Jasmine yeah. Shepard, suspected of leaving an accident. The officer asks the woman to step out of the car as he tries to handcuff her. Sir. Sir, Are please. You serious? Please, sir. Have you lost your freaking Sir, mind? please, please. The two struggle and the officer's body camera falls off. Another officer arrives and the struggle continues. Give me your hand. Give me your hand before I break it off. The attitude, the language, definitely offensive, berating, making threats. There's no place for it. There's no need for it. Tuscaloosa's police chief says he first saw this video Saturday when it went viral on social media. I didn't see anything excessive at that time. I saw one strike with an asp and it appears that after Ms. Shepard was struck with the asp that one time, that she began to comply. If you bite me, you're gonna lose every one of your teeth. You understand me? After the body camera is picked up, video shows Shepard restrained. If you do anything other than what you're told to right now, I'm gonna kick you in the teeth. Do you understand me? I am fed up. One officer claimed the woman grabbed him. She responds, I didn't. The officer then says, well, You're lucky I didn't put my gun in the back of your noggin and make you obey. You're lucky that we restrained you. Both officers are on desk duty and will go before a disciplinary board. The chief says the officers didn't follow training. I was disgusted by what I saw, what I heard, and I was embarrassed by it because it does not reflect our core values here at the Tuscaloosa Police Department. We asked the police chief if he thinks the officers deserve a second chance. He told us he's going to reserve his comments and move forward with the disciplinary process. Now, they charged this young woman, Jasmine Shepard, with resisting arrest, disarming a cop, and second-degree assault for getting beat up by the cops. And two of them are felonies, plus leaving the scene of an accident, which the police chief said should have just resulted in a ticket. They didn't even have to escalate it this far. And the police chief said it's uncalled for and there's no place for it. And he even said he's considering dropping charges on this young woman. Now, these cops were put on desk duty. They haven't been fired. But when the police chief was asked, do they deserve a second chance? Then he decided to reserve his comments because they don't have respect for our lives. Men, women, children, older, younger. In Kentucky, a 16-year-old, Guyana McMullen, died in a juvenile facility. And they didn't even find her body until 10 hours after she passed. Like, anytime that someone is dealing with children and they are not doing their job, that they should be held accountable especially when a child loses her life. Such a day for arraignments on charges of official misconduct in the second degree. Victor Holt and Reginald Windham were working at the Lincoln Village Juvenile Detention Center in Hardin County when 16-year-old Janiah McMillan died there. The Kentucky medical examiner says she died from a heart condition in January. However, state officials say the two men falsified documents at the facility and did not adequately supervise the team. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And I feel like if something was wrong with her heart, it's because of the stress or the physical altercation or whatever they did when they restrained at her. According to investigators, a martial arts hold was used on the 16-year-old but had nothing to do with her death. McMillan was taken to the detention center from Shelbyville after an altercation with her mother. She's hurting, you know, she's hurting. Not only, you know, just the last incident, but she'll never see her daughter again. McMillan's loved ones are fighting for justice. Armed with signs, they stood in front of the Hardin County Courthouse Friday to rally for support. They're hoping for a fair outcome in the case. I am very concerned that they will not be held accountable and receive the proper punishment for what they did because it seems like it's irregular for officers, uh, people who, are, who work in state facilities, and government not to be held accountable. Investigators can now report that no trauma, internal injury, or any type of asphyxiation contributed. Janiah McMillan was brought to the Elizabethtown Detention Center from Shelbyville. But on arrival, investigators say she refused to be searched for drugs and weapons. She was then restrained by a martial arts hold. Investigators all found that it played absolutely no role in her death. The cause of death is attributed to the inherited long QT syndrome that affects the electrical system of the heart. The state got help with genetic testing from the Mayo Clinic. Family attorney Ron Hilrich says he has no reason to doubt the findings 
But he adds this. Obviously, we want to get all the records, Steve, and have our own expert look at this and see if he agrees with what the coroner and the medical examiner here are saying as well. Justice Secretary Tilly is troubled by other findings. Investigators uncovered a pattern of employee misconduct that occurred over and over at Lincoln Village following the restraint, in the hours following the restraint. When the teen was placed in that martial arts restraint, one of two cameras was not working. For four minutes and six seconds, she was lowered to the floor in the restraint. She went behind the counter in the intake area, and the camera would have been on the back side shooting in that direction. The only camera that could have captured the struggle with this child behind the desk was inoperable at the time. That's very troubling to me. Now this 16 year old girl, Guyana McMullen, was arrested because she got into an argument with her mother. Now I'm not saying her mother did or did not call the police on her, but don't ever call the police on your children because you may never see them again. Don't call the police on any family member, especially for help. So they ended up taking her to the Lincoln Village Detention Center and she was complying. And they tried to say she refused to be searched for weapons or drugs, but she wasn't. She just didn't want to take off her sweatshirt. So then the judge staff decided to take her down with a martial arts Aikido style takedown. Now the jail staff is supposed to check on their inmates every 15 minutes and they falsified their records about doing it. Guyana McMullen's family said there's video of this 16 year old girl having seizures right before she took her last breath. And they still didn't even find her body until 10 hours later. Now they made sure to say nothing they did caused her death, but this 16 year old girl who never had symptoms before naturally died in her sleep, right after somebody put a martial arts move on her. They claimed she had an undiagnosed pre-existing condition and they only charged the jail staff with negligence because they wasn't checking on her. Now this is another 16 year old kid gone just because she got into an argument with her mom. And they blame this 16 year old girl's death on anything but themselves. But this is why we need to be on code and why we need to be protecting each other. We need to build institutions. If we need somebody to call, we need to call our own. And we need to build institutions in order for us to get justice. And if we can't get on code to protect ourselves and to protect our children and give them the best opportunity in the future possible, then I don't know what it's going to take. That's smelly Video appearing to show white students in blackface sparking outrage in a South Suburban community. Students at Homewood Flossmore High School are getting ready to walk out of class to protest. CBS News' Audrina Bigas is live outside the school. Audrina, what exactly are the students demanding? Well, plain and simple, these students want to see the four boys that are seen in that video punished. They want to see some type of discipline here. And after talking to students and parents today, it is clear that there's lots of tension and lots of outrage. I'm actually going to drop my umbrella just to show you what's going on behind me now. Over my shoulder, you'll see flashing lights. Police are here getting ready for this walkout. Over my other shoulder, parents, community members starting to gather here already an hour before that, pro that protest and walkout is set to begin. <laughs> this video was seen thousands of times before it was taken down. It appears to show Homewood Flossmoor students driving around with black smeared across their faces. They play around a lot, and this was just to, like the breaking point. They should have been suspended or expelled or something should have happened to let these guys know that that is not okay. Instead, students say the guys in the video are at school today. The school sent out this statement calling the video highly offensive and culturally insensitive, but administrators won't say if or how the students will be disciplined. Our school is not doing a good job of like protecting our rights. They are protecting the guys who did this. They literally have escorts to each and every class. They leave five minutes ahead of everybody. Students tell us one student in the video has already apologized, claiming he didn't know what blackface was. But for some, that apology just isn't enough.
to me, it's just disgusting to see that that people who I associate with, I, I sit with in class and laugh with and, you know, have spent time with, that they would do something like that. We don't want to be blinded by the fact that this stuff exists and it needs to be addressed now. So earlier this morning, some students talked to me. They were concerned because they were getting threatened that if they walked out, they were going to face some type of suspension or get in trouble. But we just got a letter from the superintendent of this district saying that the administration supports these students' right to express themselves about this video. It is the talk here in Piscataway with people using incendiary words like troubling and disturbing. Two social media posts of white high school students in blackface, along with racially offensive language, creating a wave of controversy and concern here at Piscataway High School. I think it's a smack in the face to all the black people. It's disgraceful. I think it indicates a lack of sensitivity. School superintendent Teresa Rafferty says the posts emerged last Thursday when a student at the school reported them to the principal. In both cases, we've redacted the identity of the posters and any offensive language. In this one, a white male student in blackface with the caption, can a fellow black man tell me how to apply for a N-word pass? In this one, a white female also in blackface, which school officials say was actually created three years ago, but never reported to them. They believe it may have been reposted last week. The school superintendent says the students in question have been identified. And when the principal of the school asked the students why they did it, the principal said that the students thought that this was a joke only intended for a few friends. They did not quite understand the magnitude of their actions. She says the two students have now been disciplined. She would not say how. The principal of the high school sent out this email to students and parents, assuring them Piscataway prides itself on being an inclusive and respectful community. At this time, our investigation indicates that this behavior is limited to a small circle of students. I think it was just dumb. I don't know why they did it. Some students we talked to say they know the posters involve and believe the what they did was wrong. It definitely should have been, shouldn't have not been on social media, but knowing the two people, they definitely didn't mean it in any kind of demeaning way. School officials say they'll be offering additional discussions on racial sensitivity at the school to try and make sure something like this does not happen again. Incendiary words and images now bringing some most unwanted attention to this community. There are new developments tonight involving two young girls from Walt Whitman High School in Bethesda who posted on social media a picture of themselves in blackface and using the N word. Now, we're not going to show you the offensive photo, but we do know that they have been suspended from school. Our Scott Broom talked with an African American student leader there to help all of us understand why this is no joke among kids to just brush off. If you're an African American kid here at Whitman High School in Bethesda, you're in a real small group. Just 4%. And while a lot of people would say there aren't any racial problems here, just listen for a moment to freshman Madison Boyd. Talk about how alienating it is to see social media posts coming from kids you thought you knew, only to find out what they're really thinking is okay to say. It is very difficult for me to be able to trust other individuals at this school because I do not know their mindset and if they would do things like this because I was very surprised about what happened the other day. So now moving forward, I am very hesitant about interacting with other people because of this. Kind of makes you feel like you're in a box. Exactly. Boyd capturing the damage that's done and why the administration here has reacted so strongly. The principal here calling the blackface and N-word social media posts by students deeply disturbing and unacceptable. Professor Neil Lesser of Arizona State University teaches courses on the N-word in our culture. That's a, that's a myth that the kids don't understand. You can certainly conflate the issue of social media with the use of this word. But the, the problem seems to be that kids only start owning up to this when they've been caught. And lots of people try to apologize it away or justify it. And there is none when parents and adults haven't really dealt with race deliberately and intentionally and honestly. And we are all very uncomfortable after the situation because, of the, because the environment at Whitman is very tense towards minorities and there is a lot of racial tensions. 
For Madison Boyd, she says the tension here has been both subtle and overt. Teachers who assume black kids don't know answers or are athletes. Boyd says she's been harassed by older boys calling names because she says they know they can get away with it. Which is why Boyd and other minority student leaders here in the Minority Scholars Program are on a mission to elevate the conversation out in the open. Right now they're producing a video project, a project about who they are, why they matter, and why using the N-word out in the open or in secret is no joke, no way. At Whitman High School in Bethesda, Scott Broom, WUSA 9. According to the Minority Scholars, Whitman's minority population is 4% African American, 10% Hispanic, and 14% Asian. In September of 2016, 13-year-old Tyree King was shot and killed by a white police officer. Now, four teenagers who were with him are being added as third-party defendants in a civil rights lawsuit over the Ohio teen's death. King's family doesn't believe the teen should be held financially responsible, but the city of Columbus does, saying their behavior was partially to blame for his death. Police said the group rode in a stolen car after robbing someone of $10. The department saying responding officers Officer Brian Mason shot King when he pulled at something in his waistband that appeared to be a firearm. It was actually a broken BB gun. Now, King's grandmother is suing, claiming her grandson's death was the result of excessive force, racial discrimination, and failure to properly investigate. If Officer Mason is found liable for damages, the teens could also be on the hook. Hey, what you hear them for? Hey, look at this shit! He ain't resisting! Look at this shit! Look at this shit! Look at this dude! Look at the officer! Look at him! He started slapping! He ain't even resisting! Look! Look at him, y'all! He ain't even resisting! Look at tough ass! Look at tough ass! He just hit him five times for no reason! He hit him five times! He hit him five times! Get the size! It was him right there! It's blood right there. He hit him five times. It's him. That's the one who done it. He did it. He done it. Him right there. Now he finna hit the baby. Now he finna hit the baby. Now he finna hit the baby. Hit the baby. Tough ass finna hit the baby. Now he finna hit the baby. Now he finna hit the baby. Hit the baby. Hit the baby. Tough ass pussy. Fuck wrong with him. I ain't going over there. I ain't worried about no motherfucker touching me. I'm straight. I ain't worried about no motherfucker touching me. Nobody. I'm not going to disclose that information. Let me give you some advice. When okay. we're on a traffic stop, you are not legally allowed to walk up and interfere with our traffic stop. You can stand back and record as much as you want to. But if you interfere with a traffic stop again, I'm going to arrest you for interfering. Okay. You understand that? Don't ever interfere when one of my guys is on a traffic stop. Okay, my name is Sergeant Dave Ernst. I'm with the State Police Gang Task Force. All right, this is your last warning. If you ever walk up on one of my officers during a traffic stop, I will place you under arrest. All right. You good? Yes. All right, you're free to go. Okay. Did you want to talk to us? Am I being detained? What? You will never detain. Okay. Ever. Is that person being detained? He was none of your business. It's none of your business. I think it is my business. How is it your business? Because I'm a human being and I. You have no interest in that traffic stop whatsoever. It's none of your business. There is a lot of it's racial profiling in this oh, town. Shut up with that crap. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of, hey, there's there's a lot of idiots, yourself, officer. Yep. Go, just go. You're gone. You're good. Go ahead. No, I can stand talking anytime I want to. Go ahead. Ready to conduct yourself. Excuse me? We have a live yeah, video going yourself. right now. I'm talking about racial profiling. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Who's being racially profiled? That individual. For, for being in a gang? For what? Exactly, just being brown. For being brown. Yes. Exactly. Wow, you are you are about as ignorant as I've ever met. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, my <laughs> goodness. You're the one who's making these things happen, oh, sir. Oh my God. Yes. You guys, go do something else. Go have fun. Go do something. It's Friday night, man. Don't be such an idiot. Put that on the website if you want. A former mentor for a Fort Bend County juvenile facility is behind bars, charged with indecency with a child. 64-year-old Deborah Sutter was having improper contact with one of the young boys who was staying there. Channel 2's Andy Sirota has new details on that story. He's live at the jail where Deborah Sutter is being held. Andy? 
Dominique, Deborah Sutter underwent background and fingerprint checks annually. Investigators tell us they don't really know much about her other than what they saw on the video and what was said by the juvenile that she allegedly had sexual contact with. As a mentor with Fort Bend County's Juvenile Probation Department, Deborah Sutter volunteered her time to help kids who've experienced trouble in their lives. Tonight, the 64-year-old is accused of having sexual contact with one of her mentees, a boy she'd been spending time with for the past 10 months. She doesn't fit the mold. I think that's what makes this interesting, doesn't it? Investigators say a staff member at the juvenile detention center had been looking at the video feed from a surveillance camera in the room during a visitation and noticed some inappropriate touching. What really caught his attention was their seating arrangement. They have a certain seating arrangement uh, that um, is prohibited. They're supposed to sit across from each other at a table. They were side by side. And they were side by side. Detectives investigated prior meetings between the pair and say they saw more inappropriate contact on a number of occasions. They interviewed the juvenile, arrested Sutter, and when they questioned her, they say she confessed. And all she uh, said was that uh, this child, um, she felt sorry for the child. He seemed to be uh, doing better. He was getting into a leadership program with the juvenile detention center. All of the visits with minors she has mentored over the past three years are now being investigated. That number is 14, nine of them boys. Investigators are compiling a list. The county's chief juvenile probation officer released a statement to us tonight. It reads in part, the Fort Bend Juvenile Probation Department has a zero tolerance policy on any form of abuse or inappropriate conduct. The safety and well-being of our youth is our highest priority and one we do not take lightly. This inappropriate volunteer is no way a representative of our other valued community mentors. Be assured that misconduct by anyone towards our youth is taken seriously, investigated, and vigorously prosecuted. Sutter is being held here at the Fort Bend County Jail tonight on a $50,000 bond. If anyone is aware of Sutter being involved in any other type of child-related activities, they're being encouraged to call the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office. A New York judge ruled that a school bus driver who raped a 14-year-old girl will not serve any prison time. Shane Pesci was a bus driver for the Watertown City School District in upstate New York, where he reportedly met the 14-year-old student. Pesci, in his 20s, raped the girl at his home in June of 2018 and was arrested in September. Local station WWNY reports that the victim's mother said Pesci, quote, bought her daughter gifts and invited her and other minors to his home where he gave them alcohol. Pesci she pleaded guilty to a third-degree rape charge in February. At sentencing, Judge James P. McCluskey did not include any jail time, as Peachy was sentenced to 10 years probation and required to register as a level one sex offender, the lowest risk designation. According to the Watertown Daily Times, Judge McCluskey stood by his ruling, saying that Peachy was never arrested before and there was only one victim. The victim's mother told WWNY in a statement that she wished Peachy received jail time, adding, quote, he took something from my daughter she will never get back and caused her to struggle with depression and anxiety. The lack of a prison sentence has sparked outrage as an online petition to recall the presiding judge McCluskey has reached over 9,000 signatures. <laughs> Hey, don't touch, don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, talk, 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 don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, talk, 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 don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch,
You hear me? I'm gonna fucking kill your nigga ass. So what now? You heard me loud, Kevin. You heard me loud, Kevin. Oh, 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 back up. Back up. Don't do that. Give me my fucking 80 bucks and get your nigga ass out of here. Hey, 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 listen. He owes me 80 bucks. No, it's okay. It's okay. I know. It's gonna be okay, real quick. Right here. Come on, bitch. You end up with a big nigga. Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom, motherfucker. Hey, listen, listen, listen. I'm right here, motherfucker. I ain't scared of your fucking nigga ass. I'm oh, wait, no. 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 Oh, wait, Be his ass. No, no, no. 